Please, guys, we'll take questions in English first, followed by questions in Dutch to follow. Um, Someone to start again, Simon. Hi, Kevin. Um, after the defeat to Sporting, um, Bernardo Silva said that City were in a dark place and you've lost two more games since then. Could you just sum up the mood in the dressing room? Because clearly this is completely different to anything as a group that you've experienced before. Um, dark, I wouldn't say dark. I would say it's been a bit chaotic, you know, before, I would say. Um, I've seen so many people pass around the, the medical area, like sports science, you know, who's playing, who's not playing. There's been people who shouldn't be playing, but they did anyway, even with an injury. So I would say these games with Sporting, Brighton and Bournemouth was a bit all over the place. I would say before the Tottenham game seemed pretty much all right to me. You know, obviously, then we had a defeat. So we just had yesterday, it was a bit quiet. But then for the rest, I didn't see um, too much change. But of course, everybody's a bit down about, you know, the 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 five losses. But, you know, you have to you take it and move on. Kevin, can I ask about yourself? Um, we ask about you to your manager a lot, a lot through the season. Obviously, you've really had struggles with injury, particularly since that Champions League final you won. How are you feeling now? And will we see the best version of you again this season, do you think? Well, obviously, last year was last year. I came back the second season. I think I did fine. You know, I played a lot of games. <laughs> I did what I needed to do and we won. I lost one game last year in the FA Cup final, so I think it was all right. I think uh, when I came back, I felt really, really good. You know, the first five games that I played. Uh, and then I had a, a little thing against Brentford, what I thought wasn't really good. And in the end, it uh, ended up being way, way worse than I wanted to be. Um, well, I don't know what it's called in English. In my language, it's called Pubalgi. <laughs> So basically, there's not a lot to see, but I couldn't kick a ball. So, you know, I can do a lot of stuff, but I wasn't able to f move freely or do, um, or do what I needed to do to play. So, you know, I wanted to, but I, I couldn't. And uh, in international break, I moved a bit around, see some people, and I'm starting to feel better now. So I'm happy about that. Um, but, yeah, it's been... a frustrating one but you know I'm starting to feel better so I'm happy about that are you someone who watches well from the sidelines have you been able to sort of support the team while you've not been playing or has it been more frustrating seeing them not able to win because you've not been able to contribute well, I think it's a bit of both. I think it can help them but in the end you can only do so much from the side and it's frustrating because I know uh, well if I was feeling good, I could help the team, but I wasn't able to do that. Even I know I was kind of training, but you know, there's there's almost only so much you you can control on the side. So it's not not a nice feeling, but you know, they they had to do it and they they tried. So you know, that is the job that that's going, and um, they they're fine. Hi, Kevin. It's the same kind of thing about being on the sidelines. But while you've been watching the games and involved with the players too, what's your analysis of what's been happening on the pitch? Obviously, the injuries have had a huge knock-on effect of the team. But what are the problems that have been caused on the pitch? Guardiola's talked about the team not being strong or stable. Um, what's, what's happening? Yeah, it seems like um, we're not really dealing with the moments when it goes bad in a game. I would say there's been moments also in the Tottenham game where I think like we're doing really well, you know, we're creating the chances, but I think the, the main issue at the moment is the ball of boxes, you know, we're conceding too easily and we, we're not scoring the goals that we, we should score and, you know, and then, yeah, I think in the, this run of form, we, we let ourselves a little bit down, seem a bit, 
I don't know, not really soft, but a little bit, you know, where we lose it a little bit because I don't feel that we played a bad game at the weekend, but it ends up being 4-0. And uh, you have to accept that you, you're not doing something good what you did in, in the past and you try have to, you have to try to resolve this issue as quick as possible. I know both boxes is a very handy way to put it because obviously if you're not scoring and you're conceding, but is it not what's in the middle? The, the, you know, Pep picks players to, to keep the ball and to win it back, but at the moment they're struggling to win it back and then they've got to run. And then the defence, like you say, people playing with injuries, they're not fully fit, they're exposed, and then that's where the goals are coming from. Yeah, but I think in the end, if you really look at it, you have five chances against Tottenham you, and you concede four. If you get five chances in a game against a team as Tottenham, that's not really that bad. But then if you... They were huge chances though, weren't they? Yeah, that's what I mean. You know, when they get the chance, it's it's huge. It's almost basically two tap-ins with the one for Madison and Brennan Johnson. And then I know in the way that we play... You also have to accept that there's going to be more opportunities for other teams to have a counter because, you know, you can't do high pressing and not leave space behind. We know that. And, um, and at the moment, we are not dealing with this in, the, in in a good way. You know, it's always going to happen. We're always going to give a chance away because this is the way that we play and we have to accept that. But now we are giving that away way too many times and also when they are coming in front of a goal it's basically a goal so we have to try and resolve that as quick as possible okay. Kevin just just on your your own future um, obviously you're out of contract in the summer I think you've said to us in this this room before that you're the sort of player that you know wants to keep playing at the highest sort of level how, what, what do you see sort of happening? Can you see yourself staying at the club or realistically do you think this is going to be your last last season at City? I honestly don't know. Um, obviously, when I started the season, I know things would, would happen and talks would happen, but then I unfortunately had that thing against Brentford. So I've, I've put basically everything to the side. I was hoping to be out for a couple of days and it ended up being... Eight nine weeks. So uh, also for the moment, I rather still get better to that first and see how I am, and you know the rest will come. I'm not really too obsessed with with things right now. I know people will ask me questions about this, but there's not a lot I can say. There's not been a lot of talks, so you know I'm fine. I'm happy. I just want to play good football again, and the future will see. I can understand that, but that's based on, you know, what I've done in the past and being here such a long time. So, I, I'm, you know, questions will come, but, you know, I can only give you the answers that I'm giving you right now because there's there's nothing really more to talk about. You know, talks will come. Um, if no talks come, then it's my last year. So, I, I, I don't know. I'm trying to be honest and, you know, people can say or write about it. Yeah, I can't affect that, you know. I just want to play good football and we'll see what the future holds. Hi, Kevin. Have the, um, have the club not instigated talks yet? Are they leaving it up to you to approach them and make your own decision with it? No, I had a conversation already but in the summer. But then, obviously, like I said... Um, I had the injury, so I didn't. I didn't really. Um, I was not in the right frame of mind to speak about that at the time. You know, I really want to be, be good and be back where I need to be on the on the pitch and be, be myself again. And then you know, there's there's no rush. Also, you know, so I don't feel uncomfortable in my situation. I just want to play football, and you know, I'm I'm not really worried. Can you just ask about the? The few weeks that you were training but weren't included in in the squads recently, can you just talk us through what what it, training was like for you in that period of time? If you felt that you weren't able to, um, I basically trained everything, but I wasn't. I, I don't know. I don't know if people understand. 
Pugolg or what it is, is basically your lower abdomen and everything with the nerves around uh, was creating pain in my, in my groins, so I couldn't really shoot. So every time I would shoot the ball, I would get really, really pain. So um, I was trying to find methods to get better, to get my power back, but it, it took a, a long time to, to get better. And actually, it only got better on Friday. I don't know why the first four days wasn't really better, and then on Friday it got better. Can't explain it. I don't know why. Um, and now the last few days, it's it's been better. So um, I'm hoping to get that, you know, still still going upwards. And um, yeah, that's it. Hi, Kevin. I, I completely hear what you're saying about your future. You just want to play it and see where that takes you. When it comes to t to the time, will the fact that Pep Pep Guardiola is sort of signed on for another two years, will that be a factor in your thinking? The fact that this great manager will still be here and all the rest of it. It could be, it could help because I know, I know what the what the future holds, and I understand. I don't have to speak about to Pep about what's happening in the future. You know, if it would be a new coach, obviously you need to have a conversation with these people because you don't know what they want with you. Maybe even I would have a conversation if I want to speak about my future with Pep because I don't know what what he thinks and maybe he changes his mind and say, "Tell Kevin, thank you, time to leave." Um, but there's more an understanding of what is happening. You know, I, I know how, how he works, uh, how he works with the team, how he works with the players. So that's nothing new to me. And just with regard to your game, the way you play football, your style, you, you still feel that the very top level you can go on, I don't know, two, three years? How, how much longer do you, do you realistically think? I've, I've no idea. Um, I can only go based on what I, what I feel. And I think when I came back in the season, I felt good. I felt I could make a difference at this level. I can make a difference for this team. And as long as I feel that, that's a good indicator that I can still play at the top level. So that's, for me, the only assurance that I need. But I have no idea how long that's going to stay. Kevin, this is your 10th season, I think, at the club. You're in the, uh, obviously, very well respected in the senior leadership group. Do you see as part of your role within that squad now to go in and talk to people, uh, to your teammates during these bad runs? And if so, have you done that in the last last couple of weeks? Um, I don't think my role changes anyway. Um, I've been with that group for seven, eight years now already. So um, I was young when I started. I'm older now. Um, some people like to speak or want advice. Other people don't don't really want advice. I don't feel like this team needs a lot of team talks. Probably we have about two really, really, you know, crisis meeting a year. So even last year, the year before, there's always been a point in time where we speak to the team and um, some people want to say or what the expectations are, or what we need to do or change. That's, I think, normal. So whenever we have a great season, that happens also. So. You know, we already had a conversation, but that was already way before. So um, I don't think at this moment in time we need another one. I think people know what what is happening at the moment. And, you know, you also have to accept that you lose five times in a row. It can happen, you know, even it's not happened to us in a long, long time. And, you know, people are good, you know, accept the challenge and move on. Hello, uh, Kevin. Uh, you speak uh, for a player that has 170 assists with Manchester City, and you speak of your injury. But uh, this time for you, like m mentally, how frustrating ha has it been uh, not being able to do what you best do, uh, perform and do, do those assists, and be a, a factor, be a difference in in the pitch? H how difficult has it been all this time with with injury? Thank you. Um, I think personally for me, this has been the most frustrating one because last. Last year, when I had the hamstring, I, I know I'm going to be out for five, six months. That's fine. But now it was, I don't know, when it happened after Inter, I was basically testing myself to be able to play for the weekend, and I wasn't able. So um, I don't know how long it would take me to get better. And in the end, it's taken me a very, very long time. So it's really frustrating to not know uh, when you're coming back and why you're getting pain. 
because you know like i said the scans were not really that bad but there's obviously been something that's not right and you know you have to deal with so um i'm i'm pleased i'm getting better but i still need to get better uh, and i'm doing a lot of stuff to to do that so you know when i'm back on the pitch i'm i'm happy and i'm happy that you know against tottenham i could see a, a difference than the last two games i came in so that's for me the the positive